Okay, and we're back for another movie. This time we're in section 5.3 and 5.4, working on problems from that study guide uh, from or for the upcoming test. So I'm, I'm going <laughs> to clump all these together, uh, and we'll go from there. So the first question and the second question have us graphing. So I'm going to graph these all on one page. Uh, you know, that's a bad idea. We're just going to do one at a time. So here's my axis. It says graph. So this is question eight. Graph two cosine of three x for x in zero to 4 pi. And then it asks follow-up questions, so we'll we'll get to those when we get there, uh, after we graph it. Um, <clears throat> no, you know what? We'll answer them first. First, what is the amplitude? Well, we can read that right off of this. The amplitude in a cosine and sine function is always this number here, with an absolute value of that number there, sorry. So 2. Okay, and what is the period? The period for cosine and sine and tangent, there's a nice little formula for that. Um, you take the, the normal period, so for cosine that's 2 pi, and for sine that's 2 pi, and you divide it by the multiple of x. So we're going to multiply or divide this by 3, which means the period is 2 pi over 3. Okay, so this, this right here gives us a very fast way, very fast way of graphing this function. And there's a little bit that we might need to sort of adjust, uh, but it, it's a really, really speedy way. So let me, let me show you that. So the first question we need to ask ourselves is where does this start? So when x is 0, where does cosine start? Cosine of 0 is always 1. So this starts at a height of 2. So 1, 2. Okay, so I'm going to also put some tick marks down here for negative 1, negative 2. Because our cosine is going to go down to negative 2 at certain angles. But before we plot those things, let's repetitively plot this. Okay, so we know that because of the period being 2 thirds of pi, we know at every multiple of 2 thirds pi, so here's 2 pi over 3, here's another multiple of that, here's another multiple of that, here's another multiple of that. So this is 1, 2 thirds pi. Here's 2 of 2 thirds pi. Here's 3 of those. So that right there is 2 pi, isn't it? Which makes a lot of sense. Okay, we can fit 3 of our normal graphs into the normal one. So where we would normally have cosine that looks like this, now we can fit three of them in there. Okay. So uh, I am not going to have sufficient room uh, that, that's okay. <laughs> I'm kicking myself. Maybe I can slide this over. And I did not realize you can't see this. So I'll put this down here. OK, there we have it. So maybe now I can stretch this out. I'm, I'm doubtful. I don't think it'll fit. 
So there's 6 pi over 3. So here's 8 pi over 3. That's 4 multiples of this. 5 multiples of that is 10 pi <laughs> over 3. And the next one brings us all the way over to 12 pi over 3, which is over there. And that's where it ends up. OK, so I will graph this to the left. And I will graph as much as I can here to the right. But basically, what you're going to have is this section is the exact same as what's here. And you'll, and you'll literally copy whatever's here and copy it one more time on the right. And that's the whole, that's everything you're being asked to graph. Because we're being asked to graph it out to 4 pi. Okay, out to 4 pi means out to 12 pi over 3. That's six full periods. So here we go. Because the period is 2 pi over 3, at every multiple of 2 pi over 3 here, we have the exact same height that we start with. OK, so that's all I said I was going to graph, but I'll keep going. I can't go all the way to the end there. So we have the same height here. Now cosine has the nice pattern that exactly halfway between here, we're at our minimum. So exactly half of this, that is exactly at pi over 3, we're at down at negative 2. And that means when we go halfway in between here, which is what is that? It's another third, right? That's exactly pi. We go another third from here. What is that? That's exactly 5 pi over 3. Exactly here. All right, so pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, 5 pi over 3, 6 pi over 3, 7 pi over 3, 8 pi over 3, 9 pi over 3. 10 pi over 3, 11 pi over 3. See, we're so close to getting there. I almost have enough space. I just realized something. Oh, the wonders of computers. This is amazing. OK. I forgot that you can resize and zoom. OK, we're good. So where's 12 pi over 3? Uh, it's right about here. 12 pi over 3, which is exactly 4 pi. OK. So I'll just write 4 pi. And then. Put that point where we couldn't before. Negative, sorry, positive two. There we go. So where was I? At all these uh, intermediate values, these thirds, right in between the two maximums, cosine takes its minimum value of negative two. So we can repetitively place this point down at negative two. And exactly halfway in between these max and mins, what does cosine do? Well, it takes zero as our value. So I'm not going to list what these values are, and I wouldn't expect you to either. But just sort of mark them out. And here's our graph then. Goes down, levels out, comes back up, levels out, goes down, levels out, comes back up, levels out. And I'm not doing this perfectly, but this looks pretty good for a graph of a cosine. It's not perfect. Is it sufficient for a full credit solution? Oh, yeah. It's got all the key elements. Okay. You've told me exactly where it has a full cycle. So there's one full cycle, here's a second full cycle, here's a third full cycle, a fourth, a fifth, and a sixth. Okay, it's graphed all the way out as far as you need it to. Okay, it, it shows me where the maxes are, it shows me where the minimums are. 
right? And it, it's more or less the right shape. So, so this, 100% enough, okay? Um, how did I do that so quickly? Again, that I just looked at the amplitude, I looked at the period, and I, I used some familiarity that I had with the cosine. I figured out where it started, and I plotted that same height at every period, so every multiple of the period. Then I, I know that cosine, in halfway in between two maximums, it takes a minimum value, which means I go down the amplitude value. Instead of going up, I go down. So that's down here. Because I know then the period is 2 pi over 3, I just go 2 pi over 3 further down the list, and I've I repeatedly place those points. And then, because I know what cosine looks like, uh, you know, I it just goes back and forth. It waves back and forth through those max and min. Okay, I'm not expecting you're a computer. I don't expect this to be pixel perfect. Okay, so this would be completely sufficient graph. Tangent, I think, is the next one. That was eight. Tangent's the next one. Tangent, uh, yeah, tangent one half of x. So graph, tangent one half x. For x in negative pi to pi, and I ask what's its period. Okay, so let's get that out of the way just like last time. Maybe that'll help. What's the normal tangent of pi? That's something maybe you should think about. Try and memorize or remember. It's pi. We normally then divide by this value, whatever's multiplied by x. So that's 1 half. But multiplying by 1 half is the same as multiplying by 2. So the period is exactly 2 pi. Hey, what's the length of this interval? That's 2 pi. So we're being asked essentially to graph one period of, of tangent, which means we're not going to have lots of repetitions. So we need to just graph one, and we need to graph it well. So here we go. Tangent is uh, more difficult to graph at least for me, if you've seen the lectures. So I'm going to plot negative pi here. I'm going to plot pi here. You know, and then we'll ask ourselves. Um, let's look for a starting point. Maybe we can figure out what uh, tangent of zero is. Maybe a minute ago you watched the movie on section 5.2 and so you know what tangent of zero is. Tangent of zero is zero. So here's our starting point. Maybe you did just watch that movie a minute ago and maybe you would remember where you plug an angle in and, and tangent is undefined. So I would hope you remember that tangent of pi over 2 is undefined because that's where you take sine over cosine and cosine is equal to zero. If we plug in pi over two to this one, we actually get tangent of pi over four, which is one. So I'm gonna write that down, pi over two. If I plug that in up here, we get tangent of pi over two times one half, which is pi over four and that has a value of 1. So we, we don't have an undefined value for pi over 2 anymore because of this multiplication by 1 half. So what angle gives us an input of pi over 2 overall? Well, it's something times 1, over, times one half. And that something is going to be pi. So if I plug this value in now, I get tangent of pi times 1 half, which is tangent of pi over 2, which is undefined. So now our vertical asymptote is at pi. 
and we have another one at negative pi. Okay, all right. So now we can we can sort of just remember what tangent looks like. Um, let's plot one more over here. Let's plug in negative pi over two. Just get another point here, and make our graph a little more accurate. We could graph some more, but uh, graphing some more would require that we know, uh, you know, how big root three would be, or how big root three over three would be, you know, something like this, or something like this. Um, if you don't have those numerical values memorized, then you're out of luck. So, so let's go with negative pi over two. What's the reference number? It's pi over two. <laughs> So it has the same value, but this one has a y coordinate which is negative. So we're going to have a negative 1 for our tangent value. Okay, so if we if we did have these numerical values memorized for root 3 and root 3 over 3, And we would know that when we plug in other angles in here that we actually get this, this curve that comes up like this and keeps increasing like this. And it gets closer and closer and closer to this asymptote. And if we had those numerical values memorized again, we could go over here and do something similar and know that this graph goes through that point there, over here, this point, and sort of this point here, that's root three negative root 3 rather, and that it just keeps coming down like this. Really, this point here at negative 1, this point here at 0, this point here at 1, those are the ones that are the important ones. They give you the general idea. And then that finding the asymptotes is the other big thing. So this is it. That's a graph of, of tangent of 1 half x for, for every value between negative pi and pi, roughly. Uh, it's our estimation of that. And we were asked for the period, which is 2 pi. And that's, that's displayed here as well. OK, so that's it for section 5.3 and section 5.4, where you were asked to graph these things. So now, on to section 5.5, the very last section that will be on this test. And this is. Uh, oh boy, this is just inverse trig functions. So we made that big video before, uh, and uh, we filled out that big table before for section 5.2. Now we're just asking these things. What is the inverse, cosine inverse of root 2 over 2? Well, this could be a lot of different things, can't it? The cosine inverse is restricted to having a certain range, right? It's the range 0 to pi. So whatever we put in here for our angle, rather, needs to be between 0 and pi. So cosine inverse of root 2 over 2, it's pi over 4. Okay, if you, if you think of other angles which are not that one, they're going to have a form like this. But we restrict ourselves to just giving 1 to make this a, a function. And it has to be between 0 and pi. So there you have it. Sine inverse. Here's the next question. So this is part B of question 10. Sine inverse of root 3 over 2. Do I have a negative sign there? I do. Oh boy, oh boy. Sine inverse of negative root 3 over 2. So again, I could respond with a lot of different angles here. But we need, when we were defining this sine inverse, we were we restricted ourselves to only giving one of the possibilities so that we have a function. Sine inverse of negative root 3 over 2, when we think about this, root 3 over 2. If it was root 3 over 2, what angle would we say? We would say pi over 3, because that's the reference angle. But we want to have a negative value here, so we go down a little bit. Okay, 
so instead of going instead of going up to a height of root 3 over 2 with an angle of pi over 3 we go down to that height of negative root 3 over 2 by going in the opposite direction remember that sine inverse can only produce angles between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 that's the standard range for sine inverse okay all right next one C tangent inverse of negative root 3 so for this one I remember explaining this one in the in the in the lectures remember that tangent is sine over cosine so sine over cosine in order to get a root 3 there we need to have like a root 3 over 2 over a 1 half and one of these is negative not the other one that will give us the simplification of a negative root 3 inside the tangent so now the question is which one has to be negative and what is the angle that gives us this well we've already got this don't we we already know that sine inverse of negative root 3 over 2 is negative pi over 3 right okay and uh, well will that work if we say this is pi over 3 or negative pi over 3 will that work what do you think right so tangent inverse needs to be defined between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 okay that was th that was the one period of, of tangent that we picked um, so what is this angle it's exactly that negative pi over 3 um, if we pick pi over 3 that gives us positive root 3 over 2 over positive 1 half we need a negative root 3 so one of these two has to be negative if we pick negative 1 half that means the cosine is negative which means we're over here outside the, the, the standard range for tangent inverse okay so we're gonna we're choosing negative pi over 3 to give us this ratio and we're we're realizing that we need to have this be the negative not that one okay uh, where was I now D D is sine in sine of cosine inverse of root 3 over 2 okay so we're gonna handle this in two steps first we need to figure out that cosine inverse and then we're gonna figure out the sine so what is the angle what is cosine inverse of root 3 over 2 what angle between 0 and pi gives us an x coordinate of root 3 over 2 that angle is our answer for that question so it's positive which means the angle is in the first quadrant and it's uh, pi over 6 okay what's the sine of pi over 6 that's 1 half we just these are things that I've asked you to memorize so there you go um, if you don't have it memorized go back to the unit circle sort that out go back to the table we made in section 5.2 e tangent inverse of tangent of 2 pi guess this is an interesting one what is the tangent of 2 pi that's 0 right All right the y coordinate is zero the x-coordinate is one this is zero it's a tangent inverse of zero what is that yes 2 pi is one of the values in this set tangent inverse of zero but because we've restricted the range of our tangent inverse to give us a function back 
we cannot pick two pi. So this has to be an angle between negative pi over two and pi over two. So what angle is it? Zero. Okay, so here the angle is the same as our tangent value. So I know this gets a little confusing, so let me draw this one out. So we go around, oops, we go around our circle, so our angle of 2 pi, go all the way around, we arrive right back here. What are the coordinates there? 1 comma 0. So the tangent of 2 pi is actually equal to the tangent of 0, as if we didn't go anywhere. They're both equal to this fraction of 0 over 1, which is obviously 0. Okay, so this is where we began. We said, okay, what is the tangent of 2 pi? It's 0. And then we asked ourselves, what angle? What angle gives us this value of 0 for tangent? Well, two of them did, didn't they? In fact, there's an infinite list of them that did. But we can't pick this one because that's outside of our typical choice of range for tangent inverse. We pick this one. Because for tangent again, we're only picking angles in quadrants 1 and quadrants 4. Okay. All right. So that's it. Um, that's that's everything from the the study guide. Uh, so there's there's no other sections will be tested over, um, just chapters three to four and the sections that I that I assign problems from here. So I hope that video helped. I hope I hope all the other videos help as well. Um, but that's it. I've done it all. So. <laughs> If you have any questions on other problems or if you have any questions on those solutions that I provided, please send me an email. Uh, uh, otherwise, good luck on the test and I look forward to grading them and seeing how you do. So until next time, take it easy, okay?